There's nothing more important to a first-person shooter than how the weapons feel and perform. Recoil, bullet spread, magazine capacity, and several other statistics play a crucial role in how a first-person shooter plays and how you can best play it. Today, we're going to talk about the Grenadier class of weapons, one of six weapon classes in Titanfall 2. Before we get started, anytime I reference damage numbers, I'm referring to a spreadsheet created by a fellow Titanfall player named Matt H. Unfortunately, because of the way Respawn handles their patches, some of the numbers will be off by a few points, but they're mostly correct. Now let's get started. It's no secret that guns are fun and powerful. Taking control of a handheld killing machine and spraying hot lead in every direction? I wouldn't imagine there's anything more enjoyable. I also assumed that guns were the best way to dispatch my enemies. Then I picked up a grenade launcher. Titanfall 2's Grenadier weapons are designed to be effective against personnel and heavy armor while not being extremely well suited for either. The four Grenadier weapons are more difficult to use and less powerful against heavy armor than rifles and anti-Titan weapons respectively, but they make up for their shortcomings with well-rounded devastation and charm. Now let's talk about all of them. The Sidewinder SMR is cross-pollination at work. This weapon is the careful blending of an assault rifle and a rocket launcher, a strange fusion that works surprisingly well. With a respectable fire rate of 520 RPM, that's rockets per minute, a comfortable damage profile and fast-moving projectiles, this weapon will feel the most like the primary weapons and anti-Titan weapons you're used to handling. In a match of pilot versus pilot, you won't have a hard time blasting fools in the chest with your mini-missiles. It'll feel like an R201 carbine in that regard. Meanwhile, in a game of attrition, you'll find it easy to mow down even the heaviest titans. And besides all the technical stuff, this weapon is fun to fire. Each pull of the trigger will send a rocket zooming across the battlefield and it'll leave behind a gorgeous trail of smoke. But as nice as it is to hold the Sidewinder, to use this gun in the wide variety of situations it's suited for, that's one of its biggest weaknesses. The Sidewinder SMR sacrifices a big boom for accuracy, flexibility, and usability. All good qualities to have, but in a weapon category that's devoted to guns that are capable of clearing an entire drop pod with a single well-placed shot, this gun can feel lacking. In other words, it's good, but it's not grenadier good. So how am I supposed to feel about the Sidewinder? Should I be grateful that it can serve me in a wide variety of situations, or should I be upset that it doesn't make me feel like a true heavy weapon specialist that's ready to turn fields of bad guys into red mist? I suppose every weapon category needs a jack of all trades master of none, and the Sidewinder fits that bill perfectly. But what if I want something a little bit more... specialized? I think a grenade launcher that shoots blue balls of death is pretty specialized, don't you? The EPG-1 is the future of explosive warfare. Each grenade that's fired from this launcher deals incredible impact and splash damage, but it sacrifices in every other category to be the biggest kid on the block. With an unimpressive fire rate of 60 RPM, one round per second, a small five-round magazine, and a remarkably slow-moving projectile, this thing isn't winning any awards for its on-paper effectiveness. But that's not where the beauty of the EPG-1 comes from. In the hands of a grunt or a pilot with a poor grasp on their jump kit's capabilities, the EPG-1 is one of the most underwhelming guns in the game. But if you can figure out how to maintain a vantage point over your enemies, you'll start seeing this weapon in a new light. And your opponents will too. The EPG-1 was designed to be big, powerful, and slow, but it's surprisingly well suited for a pilot that's the exact opposite. The faster you can move, the higher you can get, and the better you can lead your shots, the stronger the EPG becomes. This weapon grows with its user instead of having a cap on how good it can be. 
As powerful as some of the other weapons in a pilot's arsenal are, you can get good with a carbine, you can dominate with a submachine gun, but you can be an MLG badass motherfucker with an EPG-1. This weapon's drawbacks are pretty obvious, and they'll definitely be a turnoff for a pilot that doesn't like to work hard for their money. But if you're someone that likes to show off, someone that likes to travel through hell and back to acquire skills that no one else has, if you want to be a truly badass motherfucker, pick up the EPG and get to work. The R6P Softball is a classic grenade launcher. It has a six round magazine that must be reloaded one grenade at a time. It has a low rate of fire, an arced projectile, and a delay between when your grenades touch a surface and when they explode. But when they do, it's a really big boom. The Softball is a demolitionist wet dream, but all the qualities that make this weapon exciting also make it the most difficult to handle weapon in this category. It's cumbersome at best, and at worst, you're gonna regret taking it over a tried and true assault rifle anti Titan combination. But that's only if you're not considering the drastic shift in playstyle this gun forces on its users. Most pilots like to be parkour masters, which is fine, but the softball doesn't like parkour masters. It'll work with them just fine, but it prefers to sit behind an amped wall and rain death at its foes from a secure position. I'll put it to you this way. If you want to go out to the club and have a good time, the softball is going to want to stay home, Netflix and chill. If you force it to go to the club, neither you nor the softball will have the best experience. Much like the EPG-1, the R6P softball isn't an everyman weapon. It takes a special character to come to grips with its shortcomings and accept it for what it is. It's kind of like my ex-girlfriend in that regard. If you're thinking about entering a relationship with the softball, know that it's strong-willed and won't adapt to the lifestyle you're used to. It wants you to work for it, and not the other way around. We've reached the final gun in a category. This is the time when we show the best of the best. The epitome of what a class of weapons can do. Usually when you strive to be the best, you sacrifice passion for precision. Visceral, hot-blooded experiences get tossed aside for perfection. The EM4 Cold War strives to be the best. And just like the Vault, it's taken elements from its counterparts, mashed them together, and become the epitome of the Grenadier weapon class. But unlike the Vault, it doesn't make me feel sad. And it doesn't feel like it's lost anything in the pursuit of greatness. In fact, the EM4 Cold War is the most exhilarating gun I've ever used. You should be incredibly glad that something like the EM4 Cold War exists because it's an example of what happens when great minds come together and learn from their mistakes. The Sidewinder has precision but it lacks area of effect damage. The EPG is a powerhouse but anyone with half a brain will know to move out of the way of the big blue balls of death. Finally, the softball is so niche that it feels more like a novelty pick than something you'd bring for a serious engagement. The EM4 Cold War with its comfortable magazine size, consistent rate of fire, hefty area of effect, and high speed projectiles make it well suited for everything the other guns in the Grenadier class do, and more. But there are intangible qualities. The way you feel when you take this weapon into battle. When you pull the trigger, the arching moan of the charging sequence followed by the rapid pulsing of its custom projectiles. It's a unique experience that only this weapon has, which means it has character. And by choosing to have character, it has a weakness. 
The charging sequence that makes this gun feel so fantastic has a hidden effect of adding an additional fraction of a second to your reaction time. Additionally, the 12 round magazine will feel more like 3 because this gun fires in 4 shot bursts. All in all, the EM4 Cold War is a powerful weapon, one that I would argue is the best in its class, but it doesn't outshine its partner. Instead, it learns from the Sidewinder, takes lessons from the EPG, and respects the softball. And there we go. I don't think we brought any tears to anyone's eyes this time, but you don't always need to. The Cold War isn't a sad monstrosity like the Vault. So as always, the name of the game is Titanfall 2. The name of the channel is iBlueAirJGR Gaming for Comedy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.